Hey students, this is Lesson 635, Classifying Polygons. We are going to learn how to classify polygons um, according to how they appear on a coordinate plane. So, uh, a couple things we need to know is just some different names for polygons. One way we can, one way we can classify triangles is by the size of their angles. We can call them acute an acute triangle, if all of the angles are acute, which means they're less than 90 degrees. And we can call an obtuse triangle, if there's one angle that is obtuse, that's one angle greater than 90 degrees. Or we can call it a right triangle, if the angle has one right angle, usually denoted by a little box like that. Um, an equal angular triangle is an acute triangle where all angles are equal. We also call this an equilateral because all sides are equal. And um, that's what we're going to use more here uh, is how do you how do you classify triangles by their side length? If all sides are equal or all sides are congruent, then we call it equilateral. If two sides are congruent, we call it an isosceles triangle. Two sides are equal. And uh, if there are no equal sides, we call that a scalene triangle. All right, so we're going to use that right away here. We're going to use those three words. All right, so what you're going to do on this one is we are going to use the distance formula to see if any of the sides are the same. If, if uh, three of the sides are the same, then we're going to call it an equilateral triangle. So we're going to look at this triangle PQR, this triangle SUV, and this triangle KLM. If uh, two of the sides are equal, we're going to call it an isosceles triangle. And if none of the sides are equal, we're going to call it a scalene triangle. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do number nine here. So go ahead and plot those points. Let's pause it right now so you can plot those points. And then we'll talk about finding the length of the sides. All right, so here's our triangle once we uh, plot the points and connect them. Our triangle PQR. And uh, one thing that we noticed right away is that PQ, segment PQ, is perpendicular. This is symbol for perpendicular to QR. And knowing that, um, and that's because PQ is a horizontal line and QR is a vertical line, and every horizontal line is perpendicular to every vertical line. So that means we have a right angle. So we, one way we could classify this triangle is as a right triangle. We can also classify it by its sides by finding the measures of each of the angles. Now, the measure of QR, QR, that's this measure right here. That's just equal to, and we can just count that on the grid, one, two, three, four, five, six. QR is six. Uh, PQ is likewise one, two, three. PQ is three. And then PR, we have to use Pythagorean theorem to find the measure of PR. And since it's on a coordinate grid, we can um, just count on there and use those values. So this is 6, that like 6, that like 3. So PR is, we're going to do 6 squared plus 3 squared and then take the square root of that, which is 36 plus 9 is square root of 45, which is about uh, 5.8. So notice that the three different sides are three different lengths. So we can also say that this triangle is a scalene triangle by the sides. Scalene meaning there are no sides equal. All right, uh, I'm going to erase all that and do one more with you, and we can do the last one in class. So uh, the last triangle, we'll do, well, I'll do this next one here, SUV. Actually, you know what? I'll do number 11, KLM. So K is... 4, 0, so that means go over 4, up 0, that's that point. Uh, L is negative 2, 0, that would be right there, negative 2, 0. 
And then M is 1, 5, so go up one, over 1, up 5. That's right in there. Then we're just going to connect those dots. So we got this one connects to there. And got one here connect right there. And then there. All right. Uh, now, just from sight, this almost looks like maybe it's an equilateral triangle. Maybe not. Maybe it's an isosceles triangle. Um, it's certainly an acute triangle. All angles are less than 90, so we can call this an acute triangle if we label it by the angles. Uh, we can also call it, uh, if we find the lengths of the sides, we could find a name for that also. Now, um, one way we could find the lengths of the sides is to use these corded pairs. So if I label it K L M, there's three sides I need to find. I need to find K L, I need to find L M, and I need to find M K. All right, so K L, and I'm just getting at the distance for me to, to do that. K L, so I'm using these two points now. We subtract the x coordinate, so 4 minus negative 2, square that, and we subtract the y coordinates. 0 minus 0, square that, and that equals 4 minus negative 2 is 6 squared is 36, so that's the square root of 36, which is 6. And we could have just counted to find that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, the angles that are more diagonal, we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find that distance formula. So LM, we're going to use this point and this point. So my x coordinates are negative 2 minus 1, and my y coordinates are 0 and 5, and that equals uh, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 squared is 9. And negative 5 squared is 25, so that's the square root of 34. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 34. Then we'll do one more side. We're going to do km. So I'm using those two points. So 4 minus 1 squared plus 0 minus 5 squared. And that equals... Uh, 3 squared is 9, and negative 5 squared is 25. 9 and 25 is 34. Square root of 34. So I notice right here that I have two sides that are the same. These two sides are the same. That means this is an isosceles triangle. All right. I'm going to leave the last one for us to do in class. Number 12 we can do in class. Let's go and classify some quadrilaterals. So here's some information about types of quadrilaterals and then we need to define those. Uh, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, square, trapezoid, kite, uh, and then some definitions. Parallelograms are quadrilaterals where opposite sides are parallel and equal in length. Also opposite angles are equal. Rectangles are parallelograms, but they have something special, and that is that all their angles are right angles. So it's a quadrilateral with four right angles. All right. A rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. A square is a rhombus with four right angles, so it's four equal sides and four right angles. And a trapezoid is a figure with one pair opposite sides. A kite is uh, an object that has two sets of congruent adjacent sides, adjacent being the important term there. So the, the two sides that are adjacent, which mean the next two are congruent. All right. So I'm going to let you do, uh, we're going to do these in class, classifying them work on those. I just want to do one uh, 
problem where we are classifying using a quadrilateral on a coordinate grid, and that would be this problem right here. Number 21, it says graph and label each quadrilateral with given vertices, then determine the most precise name. I'm going to pause and um, go ahead and plot those points on there, and we'll talk about how we're going to go about classifying it. All right, so we labeled those points, P, Q, R, and S, and uh, when, once we did that, it sure looks like a trapezoid. And I think we can prove it quickly that it's trapezoid. A trapezoid needs one set of parallel lines. And what we're going to do is use the slopes to show that PS is parallel to, and that's what the symbol is, PS is parallel to QR. And the reason we can say that, we can actually use a slope form formula and find the slopes uh, to be really official, but they're both horizontal lines and all horizontal lines are parallel. So, but we can find the slope of PS by doing 2 minus 2 over negative 3 minus 3, and then 0 divided by 6, which is 0. And then PR we can find by doing this point is negative 5, 0. This one is 5, 0. And so we would do, for that one, we would do 0 minus 0 over 5 minus negative 5, which is 0 over 10, which is 0. So we can see the slopes are the same, so there's one set of parallel lines. Okay. We can also say it's an isosceles trapezoid if we show that this line and this line are the same distance. To do that, we can use the distance formula. We can say Rs is equal to, and from R to S, our x coordinates are 3 and 5, so 3 minus 5 squared plus uh, 0 minus 2 squared, and that's equal to the square root of 8. And then we can do PQ is equal to, we're using these points now, negative 5 minus negative 3 squared plus 2 minus 0 squared. And that's equal to negative 2 squared is 4, plus 2 squared is 4, which is square root of 8. So um, we know that Rs equals PQ. So this is a, we can actually say this is an isosceles trapezoid because of that reasoning there. All right, I think we'll do the rest in class. Uh, that should do it. I'll see you tomorrow.